Despite three and six last year, Mike Norvell has energized uh, the Florida State fan base in a number of ways, and one in particular has been the recruiting prowess uh, that has been shown for 2022, especially and going forward beyond that. We got uh, Nate Greer on the line from Noel Game Day to help us out with all of that. Nate, how are we doing today? I'm good. How about you? Thanks for having me on again. I appreciate it. Hey, it thank you. Fun time, yeah, fun time in Tally this weekend, you know. Uh, you know, Florida State coaches took a uh, advantage of a of a way to get guys on campus, and it was a uh, by all accounts it was a home run for that staff. So, good job by that by that whole coaching staff this weekend. Things are opening up, but uh, not necessarily to the extent for a lot of schools, programs, teams across the, across the nation to where they're doing that. So, yeah, time to take advantage of uh, being more open than others. And um, so, so what did that list look like and uh, kind of run through the highlights? So, you know, going into to the weekend, they had well over 100 kids that at point said they were going to attend the spring game. And realistically, they probably had about 80 to 85, which is still a really great turnout for a game you know, for, without being able to do anything that's visit related. So they actually – just went to watch a football game. But the big thing was um, th the weekend was kind of led by um, two current commitments for Florida State, uh, five-star Travis Hunter and four-star quarterback Nico Marchio. They were really the guys that were the driving force behind um, getting a lot of these kids to come to the visit and also kind of being the quasi-host, you know, filling in the role that the coaches may traditionally fill when it comes to walking around campus, meeting up with other recruits, um, they really did a great job of um, being the, the mayor, so to speak, uh, of their class and of uh, filling in for the coaches. So they did a really great job of making these kids feel welcome. Um, they spent a lot of time outside the Moore Center, um, welcoming recruits and the families, talking with fans. So those two guys did a for their staff but you look at the the biggest i guess negative is you know julian armella didn't come a legacy recruit uh offensive lineman that florida state's been after and a lot of the fans really want florida state to land you know he didn't make it up and, and that puts a little damper on it and you know quincy mcadoo was supposed to come with his mom he didn't come ends up decommitting yesterday um, you know, there are a couple of guys who did not show up that they expected or wanted to come, but the the end result was a really, really great time with five stars. They had over over 50 considered blue chip recruits there, which is probably the best collection of talent Florida State's had since, you know, Jimbo's run. So, Nate, when you yeah. look at uh, Quincy McAdoo's uh, situation, sorry yeah. to cut you off. I think we've got a bit That's of a right. lag there. Yeah. But uh, when we look at uh, Quincy McAdoo's situation, uh, you had uh, pointed out to me before we started to record uh, some of the particulars there connected to him staying at home mm -hmm. and uh, Mike Norvell and his staff uh, losing who was primarily the first uh, recruit they went after. Yeah, he was one of their very first offers that they they put out there when they came over to, to Florida State. Even you know, looking at that 2020 class, they even – still made a point to reach out to him and give him an offer. So it's a guy that they were after for a while. I wouldn't say clear, but clear that, you know, Matt McAdoo is probably going to make a decision to decommit class. Okay. Uh, it's not guaranteed he ends up by Arkansas. It's like a 98% chance. But it, it is a guy that Florida State was very heavily recruiting, a guy they really like. When you look at this uh, wide receiver class in, in 2021, it's not – or, I'm sorry, 2022, excuse me. It's not a great class. So getting a guy who they looked at as a possible Tamari and Terry-like receiver to, to jump in in January, it, 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 it is a loss. So, um, you know, you look at what they possibly can bring in after that. You know, they're, they're still after Kevin Coleman, who's the number one receiver in the country. Um, Caden Saunders is committed to Penn State. You have Greg Gaines out of Tampa. So you know, there's, there's still quite a few kids. And what we noticed with Norvell is when someone decommits, they have a plan. So it's not what we saw, unfortunately, with Taggart. 
you know, if someone decommitted, they didn't have a backup. So I'm quite sure the staff has a backup plan and was the head of the game, knowing that this was probably coming down the line. Good player, you know, hurt, hurts the class a little bit, but, you know, good luck to the kid wanting to stay home.